I am Paolo. Thanks to Casper for having invited me here. So I am going to present actually artworks, uh, so slightly different uh, than the other projects. I am a media artist um, and a contemporary artist, uh, probably really contemporary. And the material that I work with is uh, uh, the power of information. That sounds really uh, general and abstract, but what is actually power information? Well, it's a term that comes from uh, the military uh, sector and means actually knowing more than your enemy. And as also a specific uh, name, that they call it fifth dimension. So it's like a set of strategy uh, to know know more than your enemy and eventually win the war. So this is uh, uh, what is actually uh, power information of the time, so a symmetry of information. And uh, I work with this material and I do uh, type of performances, uh, live performances, and I also call them sculpture. And uh, so what is probably the closest idea of power information today uh, is uh, uh, well, uh, about language, information, communication. And these are things that are really common in my uh, uh, work. So, hacking information of technology, but also marketing, legal, art, and popular language. And then involving a large and alternative audience beyond, beyond the art world. And, um, and so then having a participatory audience in this process, and then also trying to provoke effective change. And so sometimes my work is quite uh, an activism um, um, process. And then uh, uh, try to uh, produce media, personal, legal, and also repressive reaction. So uh, the closest idea of power information to us is probably Facebook. And so I will start to present this project that's also one of uh, the most popular that is called Face to Facebook. So uh, the target uh, was actually Facebook. Sorry. <coughs> Of course, how could I challenge Facebook as a company, one of the most powerful company in the world right now, and with uh, one billion users um, uh, using it, basically, uh, be a slave of it? Uh, well, um, it was really through a uh, provocation, uh, building basically a dating website without asking permission out of user of Facebook without asking the permission of the Facebook user too. Uh, so I will show you uh, uh, clips that explain what I done, and then I will explain more the detail of it. Like him for her, want to arrange a date? Lovelyfaces.com lets you peruse profiles and admire photos. The web's producers went through a million Facebook profiles and chose 250,000. The problem is this isn't really a dating website. The site's producers call it social commentary on the lack of privacy in the age of Facebook. We talked to Wired.com's Ryan Single via Skype. They went and they scraped Facebook, basically took the information people had publicly accessible and took 250,000 people's information and put them all on a dating site without their permission. Ever heard that term, scraping? That's the collection of information, but without the illegal element of hacking. Projects like this um, kind of are good for us to kind of stop and think a little bit, like, you know, how is it we want to be on the internet? What, what, do, why don't we have better choices about They how are good, we so he basically uh, we helped to frame this project as a way to provoke a thinking of the uh, user of Facebook. And so this was just one of the um, videos produced uh, from the media, mainstream media, it was also on CNN, this news. I just want to show a clip uh, that is also really funny to make you laugh, and then I will... Keep talking. This afternoon, a warning about your Facebook page. Your picture and information may now be part of an unauthorized online dating site. The site's creators say they're trying to make a point. A Cherokee County woman is trying to make some unwanted emails go away. Channel 2's consumer investigator Jim Strickland talked with her today. Jim? Javita, the creators of LovelyFaces.com say their dating site, seeded with unauthorized Facebook pics, is meant to prove how vulnerable Facebook users leave themselves. Cindy Holtzman of Cherokee County needs no further convincing. There doesn't seem to be any reason why you'd be getting emails from strange men. Not seven of them in a two, three day period from all over the world. But Cindy Holtzman of Woodstock says those emails started coming 
shortly after last week's launch of a dubious dating site called lovelyfaces.com. They won't sell my information to a third party, but they'll, in my opinion, steal it from a second party. Two European artists admit to scraping 250,000 photos from Facebook pages and creating a dating site with them. We found the fancy YouTube video explaining the whole deal. Holtzman says she can't find her picture yet, but she's suddenly getting emails from single men. One charmer writes about how stunning she looks. I don't want these emails. They're creepy. Computer security expert Gregory Evans says... I'm sure she was happy, actually. And this was uh, just uh, one of the personal reaction because, of, of course, this project affected directly people. Probably some of you were actually inside this dating website. And so we call this a project made with Alessandro Ludovico, who is also a media uh, theorist from Italy. And uh, so we call this a social experiment. So what happens if we uh, put uh, over hundreds of thousands of people in a dating website without asking permission? So some of them, of course, they get really pissed and uh, so these are this is stuff that people wrote as uh, through the form of the website so fuck your site you suck motherfuckers uh, your, your site fucking blows and blah blah but also you like uh, well done or people asked to be uploaded on the dating website or they were like asking to find a specific type of partner also like business proposals so people that want to buy the website, the dating website, or share the data. So this was really a direct uh, participation of the people. And uh, then uh, the other reaction uh, was also the media. So I, I just screened a couple of uh, um, just uh, uh, clips uh, from the TV, but they were uh, uh, more uh, in the national TV, uh, like also in Germany, in the Czech Republic, in China, and then uh, a magazine, uh, radio, newspaper, uh, and a blog, and uh, etc. So we counted over 1,000 press uh, coverage in uh, basically one week. And of course, that was also on the social media and Facebook itself. So the news went uh, basically viral all over the world. And uh, we think that this happened because this was kind of the perfect news. It was about crime. So stealing this data from Facebook it was about fear because that could affect everyone, everyone could lose uh, their own uh, information, private information. And then it was about love and sex, of course. So it was the perfect news for the media. The, the third reaction, though, was actually the legal reaction. So after just a few days that we published this dating website and this project, uh, Facebook sent the first season to this letter and asking, of course, to shut down the dating website as soon as possible and uh, um, giving them back all this data that I stole, that basically they were like JPEG and little information. And uh, then they ban us from Facebook. And so we are not allowed uh, officially to use Facebook anymore. And we actually had an account on Facebook that they closed down, shut down the same day. And so in, in, um, to, to, to defend us, we found a um, lawyer that protected us under the pro bono program. And so uh, this lawyer replied to another letter say simply that we didn't violate any security because they didn't have any security. And this data was kind of public because it's just data that you can find even on Google and uh, so on. And so they uh, replied, uh, and well, meanwhile, we also shut down the dating website because it was really intense also from the, the press, uh, the, the, the personal reaction. And they were replied that that wasn't enough and they were really aggressive and they want to also uh, remove all these uh, website that is about the documentation of the project. At one point, we also received another email from another legal department uh, because of trademark infringement because the, the, the website has Facebook in, uh, in the title. So it was a, a, a long uh, process of change of information since uh, till they basically dropped the keys, also because this project won uh, Ars a prize of Ars Electronica and other award and many exhibition. So to do this uh, was basically a script, so it was really uh, uh, a really simple hack uh, that let me basically to download, harvest information from Facebook without end, just basically following the, the, the social network like friend to friend. And then I created a database and then with face recognition I could actually uh, classify these people by facial expression. Uh, and so the, the interesting part 
uh, this is the dating website that is actually offline, but they can still show you. Uh, basically, people could actually really use it, and these people were categorized by uh, the facial expression that is also the inferred temperament. So sly, smug, climber, and uh, easygoing or funny. And so you could actually find a girl that is sly in Amsterdam and maybe likes precisely a movie or something. So this was, and so then if you click, now I try to click on random person, and it's probably also going to be slow. Uh, but basically, uh, you could actually end up then on the home page of, um, of Facebook of this person, this is a real person, and uh, I contact this person and arranging a date. And uh, these are like real friend, best friend, because of course it's just Facebook as it is. And that is also like a section where you can find similar persons. So that also had like a um, data mining engine somehow inside this database. Okay, this is the, the first project about privacy. And uh, actually, I've been invited here with this other project that is called Street Ghost. And there is an installation of, of this room. And actually, it's a street art project. That means that uh, this is uh, in the street in Amsterdam. Uh, and uh, there is also a map that I will show. Uh, quickly, this explain what it's all about. <laughs> From Mashable, I'm Lauren Gorris. Google's Street View feature, which aims to capture city streets and landmarks, sometimes captures you. You've probably seen it online, the blurred faces on the sidewalk or outside the grocery store. But now you can see some of the same figures offline. Street artist Paolo Sirio is copying and literally pasting life-sized images of people captured by Google on streets in the exact spots you'd find them online. He calls the project Street Ghosts, a fitting name because you'd never be able to match the blurry face. Serio is putting posters up in London, Berlin, and New York City, but he's not doing it as a kind of where's Waldo. Instead, he's trying to make a statement about the publication of the images. He writes, as the publicly accessible pictures of individuals taken without their permission, I took the pictures of individuals without Google's permission and posted them on public walls. Now, whether his poster prints make the political statement he's hoping for is really up to you, but Street View has grabbed plenty of headlines over privacy issues. And you may remember that man in France who sued Google over an image captured of him peeing in his front yard. Thankfully, Sirio has not taken his project to France yet. I don't know what They're happened, what happened here in, uh, in Netherlands if I have a poster of someone peeing their own property, but hopefully it's not the case. So these are some posters that I pasted uh, in these days. Uh, there are only six around Amsterdam. This is probably really the most uh, central um, one. Also in this case, sorry. So these actually are the picture of Amsterdam. So there is this person with the dog. They look uh, uh, all the same. These like two old people in Amsterdam that don't know what they were thinking about this, what they what, what was about. Uh, and uh, also this project uh, uh, generated a lot of press uh, uh, in um, several type of media from uh, uh, newspaper, but the interesting thing was also that uh, was uh, a photography project, architecture, design, of course tech, and uh, of course it's fashion, uh, street art, and so it became really popular and now has been um, all over the places. And uh, the interesting uh, concept is about the ghosts, so why they are ghosts? Well, first of all, it's also visual representation because they are really uh, blurred, so you cannot re really recognize them, so it's really about visual exposure. But they also come from the past, from uh, most of these pictures are from 2007, 2008, and so on. So this basically data that Google are harvest, and they keep it forever, and eventually they trade forever. So they are digital ghosts. They come from this digital archive that we don't control, and they eventually use. And eventually, this 
data, this information come out in the future. So uh, Google is an example, but if you think uh, at Facebook in 100 years, 200 years, you don't know what they will do with your own data, your, your data. So you eventually will be a ghost. This digital personal data will be something else in the future. And so this is the concept. And the other concept is that these people are totally random victim. Uh, well, they are random victim of who? Of Google, of course, uh, and the, the, the legislators that didn't manage to protect this data, the algorithm that didn't manage to blur them enough, and the crazy artists that eventually want to do art with this type of material. So they are basically collateral damage of this information war that is going on. Okay, uh, there is another project that I did uh, about uh, actually uh, Twitter, uh, but uh, I prefer to go ahead with uh, something else. Um, in that case, now I cannot find them. Sorry, one second. So in that case, it was also similar because it uh, was about uh, harvesting uh, one million people on, uh, on Twitter, American people that tweet about... Um, uh, sorry, uh, this is total information overload. <laughs> there we go. So persecuting as. So this case is also similar to the project of Facebook was investing uh, one million people from uh, Twitter that tweet about the US election, the last US election, or they were friends of someone that tweet about the US election. So this is like huge database of real people that then I organized for uh, between uh, um, political affiliation. So if they were Democrat or Republican. And you can look for people and you can tweet to them and eventually making a threat to them. So it became a kind of uh, um, civil war uh, platform. <coughs> so uh, why these are sculptural performance art? Well, it's because it's about a flow of information, so everything is ephemeral, and also new media technology is changing, even devices are changing, so I cannot even see like this as a stable material, stable medium. And uh, why is a sculpture? Well, because, because there is a structure. I give a structure to this raw material that is pure information, it's a, a lot of material. And so I am a kind of constructivist, that is a, a, a philosophy too. And I also feel close to Joseph Boyce that created this term of social sculpture, so bringing people together. So you can imagine that now is the first time in history that an artist can engage directly thousands of hundreds of people in their performance and uh, making them like participative in real time. And that is thanks to Facebook in a way. Um, so I want to show you another um, a topic that I am working on that is actually finance. Uh, and uh, I did a project about a credit card. This is like uh, my last project about finance that is actually about Cayman Island offshore finance. Well, information is about money and money is about information. And today in the crisis, of course, there is a huge abuse of information asymmetry. That means banks knowing much more than us. And especially in the offshore world that everything is anonymous. So so how could I uh, target the Cayman Island? Uh, there is a, a little clip that explains. to you. Let Mr. Politician know how you feel. Let him know that you're not going to take no more. Stop paying taxes. Stop paying for corruption and injustice. 
Okay, so in this case, the target was Cayman Island. Uh, what it did uh, is uh, uh, scraping, uh, stealing again information from the server of the government of the Cayman Island, information about the uh, companies registered that there, sorry. And uh, that is about over 200,000 companies. Of course, these companies are real, but also fake, because just like people pretending to be based in the Cayman Island to avoid taxes. So there are banks, there are multinational, but there is also mafia and uh, all these uh, um, people, rich people, basically, rich companies that try to hide money and uh, uh, much more behind a company. So uh, what I could do uh, with uh, all these uh, name of company? Well, this is a participative, uh, participatory project, so everyone can actually steal the identities of this real Cayman company. Uh, how? Well, you enter a name that you like, uh, uh, let's say that I like Amsterdam, and they want to have a company called Amsterdam. And so these are all real company in the Cayman that have Amsterdam as keyword. And so, well, I don't want to steal the identity of Rotterdam Bank because it's too much, but let's say that I just want to steal Amsterdam LTD. So, and then I can buy this document that is actually a real, real, um, or, or really, really used in the Cayman. Uh, that is the certificate of incorporation. So I can buy this in a digital uh, copy, so high resolution or a printed copy. Or I can even buy, you can even buy a mailbox of the Cayman Islands. So I do have a mailbox of the Cayman Island, and if you buy this service, I will forward you every envelope that you send to your address in the Cayman Island for only 50 bucks a year. And also another option is this certificate with my real signature handmade. So I was selling these certificates uh, quite uh, a few, and I made also a, a bit of money, and I helped people to avoid taxes wherever they want by stealing the identity of real Cayman company. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's that's why that, w how that is so easy to do. Well, uh, these companies, uh, the owner of these companies, uh, are anonymous. That is like a specific feature that uh, this uh, offshore offshore um, center offer, like Switzerland. They say, okay, you can open a bank account here, and we won't disclose your real name. So because of that, everyone can actually pretend to be the owner of these uh, companies because th the only document that shows your, the, the ownership is that uh, certificate of incorporation. So this uh, project, of course, was a threat against the Cayman Island, and it worked. Um, it worked. So uh, on the Cayman Island, uh, they reacted. This is like the uh, main channel on the TV of the Cayman Island. A world-renowned computer hacker claims to have breached the Cayman Islands Registry of Companies website. Paolo Sirio says he's published details of more than 200,000 companies listed here in Cayman. But government insists there has been no breach and reassures businesses their information is safe. In a statement issued today, they, they say the hacking claim is fake and they've received a number of queries to government over the claim. Donnell Dixon, the registry's senior assistant registrar, adds the registry's website features robust security features that avert information theft. The statement says the so-called hacker had simply cut and pasted company names into a template to create bogus certificates. Mr. Serio has previously hacked popular sites like Facebook and Amazon. So, okay, so of course they deny that they hacked their server, they didn't want to admit it, and they want, they want also to minimize the fact, but they didn't get that actually to be in that TV station was already a hack, a media hack, the fact that they were talking about that, and the fact that it was a legal hack about the fact that the, that document was so much important, was even much about the information anymore, uh, although it was about over 200,000. So uh, other type of reaction, uh, media reaction, is like this. So in Bermuda, this is the newspaper in the Bermuda, and they were worried that uh, the, my next target was going to be Bermuda. So they say, loop all for our artists to target Bermuda, like national panic. And then... <coughs> And then, uh, and then personal reaction in a way. So real business uh, in the Cayman Island, because of course there is also honest people. So this is like 
people that they have like a bar on this beach writing me and saying, no, I don't want that people steal the identity of my company, please remove me. And uh, of course, they, they, they are like legal threats saying, uh, if you don't do that, I will uh, sue you and blah, 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 and uh, so many. The most interesting ones were actually people that didn't write me, but they were subscribing to the newsletter. And so they were actually really big uh, bank uh, consultant um, and uh, so on. So people that actually set up this structure. And <coughs> uh, another interesting thing about this project is the, sorry, is the, is the structure that I use myself to sell this uh, uh, type of material. So I am an Italian citizen, I incorporated myself in London, I am based in New York, I stole information on the Cayman Island, but I store it in California, where there is law that protect this type of digital information. And I was making money through uh, PayPal, so you people could buy uh, this stuff on PayPal that is based in Luxembourg, and the cash was going to uh, New York and didn't pay any taxes theoretically in London. The fact is that uh, PayPal, after uh, three weeks, banned me uh, and account and froze all the money that I made. And uh, so that intermediary is gone and they lost all my money. And, um, and that is basically the end of the project. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> We, we have to wrap it up here, Paul. Thank you for giving the word cash flow a totally new meaning to, to, uh, to all of us. <laughs> very interesting, and I, I think also very much in line with the activist kind of documentary that, that many of us have been working with uh, in the traditional world. So thank you very much for a great presentation. Thank you, Paul.